Are you Team Edward or are you Team Jacob? If you answered Jacob, go check out our Space Wolves video and Adam will sort you out. But if you said Edward, stick around. Anvil of War! Review roll out! Before we kick off, um, I would like to extend a huge thank you to our subscribers. And if you like this video and you're new to our channel, please hit the subscribe button down below in the right hand corner of the screen. Also, if uh, you feel like it, hit that bell icon, get a notification each time we upload a video. It's usually every weekend. Uh, so, Codex Flesh Tear, Codex Blood Angels. Um, huge thank you to Red Dragon, our sponsors over in Orleans, Ontario, for providing us with this supplement um, for us to review for you today. So, uh, without further ado, let's over to the table. Alright, so this is the Codex supplement for the Blood Angels in all of its glory. Um, so this is to be used in conjunction with Codex Space Marines. Now this big guy here, he has all your meat and potatoes units. Um, the Blood Angels Codex supplement actually just specifies the Blood Angels specific units and then uh, throws in extra stratagems and all that. So without further ado, let's open it up. So... We got our screaming faces that you see on everything now. Uh, here we are, just some artwork there. You got some, I don't know if that's Dante, it could be Sanguinary Guard. You have very obviously Death Company, and then just a regular Blood Angel mate. Quick introduction, table of contents. And now here's the artwork from the cover with a little blurb. Now, I love this artwork uh, from the cover. It's it's new, It it really... It shows the Blood Angels. They have their angelic host. You have the Sanguinor. The keen eye of you will notice Mephistons chilling out in the back here. Um, smiting someone or what have you. Um, and it shows off that all the the uniqueness of the Blood Angels in their, their helmets. They denote rank or they denote squad type through helmet design. So you have some assault marines or assault intercessors in this case with the yellow helms. Uh, regular guy with the red helm. It'll, we'll get more into that as we go through the book. So, this is some classic artwork they got. It's nice to see them throwing in some of the original stuff, just keeping it... Keeping it, um... Keeping it real. <laughs> so, uh, Heritage of Sanguinius, just, again, it gives you all the, the backstory and the Blood Angels. You got some Sanguinary Guard here. Now, uh, I'm not going to go too deep into this stuff. I mean... This is for all of those of you who love the Blood Angels. Just, I mean, pick up a copy of the book and read it for yourself. It's, a, it's It is a great read. Nice big blurb on the Death Company. Now, I will touch on this. For those of you who don't know, the Death Company are the Blood Angels who have been consumed by the Black Rage and they're overtaken with uh, visions of Sanguinius before his death at the hands of Horus. So they turn into <laughs> homicidal maniacs and they are unleashed upon the enemy to try to have a good death in battle. So this kind of goes over that. And then you have Astrath, Grimm, and Lamartes, who are two of the chaplains within the Blood Angels, and it is their job to basically be the wardens of the Death Company. Uh, any who survive will meet their end at uh, the blade of Astarath's axe. And Lamartes, he buffs them on the table, and he supports them in the game and just guides them. Here we have some more artwork here. Um, or, or Ordering of the Host. So just basically shows the chapter command, lists the, the names of the chapters. Uh, another war zone, we see these in all the new books now. They all have their own war zone attached, so this goes through the, uh, the order of battle. And then some background lore blurbs. If you're looking to do a narrative report or narrative uh, mission, you can base it with your Blood Angels in Warzone Acrabeller. And I'm just going to say it again. I love these. These are my favorite part of the codices. They basically, it's just a really cool like, short story. Um, definitely give these a read in all of your books. They're totally worth it. Excellent writing by GW. And here we just go through the units, um, like a blurbs on the, the HQs or the, the special units. We got Commander Dante, who is the chapter master. Also the oldest living space marine, as far as I'm aware. Bjorn isn't living, Adam. Um... Mephiston, the Lord of Death, he is, he's a bad, bad man. He's the only Blood Angel to actually have been, uh, survived the Black Rage and beaten it. But, uh, at what cost, we don't really quite know. 
Captain Tycho. He is, uh, he hates the orcs. He is another captain who fell to the death company, but he has since passed into the emperor's embrace or whatever they call it. He's dead. <laughs> so this kind of just goes over him. Uh, this touches on the flesh terrors. Now, uh, yeah, flesh terrors. The successor chapter of the Blood Angels, possibly the most famous of them. They're they're pretty savage, obviously. They're, they're renowned for their savagery, even amongst the Blood Angels. Gabriel Seth is their chapter master. Just look at that sword. <laughs> look at that chain sword. I love it. it. It's a chain sword that hits like a thunder hammer. And then it just goes over the rest of the su their successor chapters. They've obviously added more um, because they've been reinforced with Primaris Marines, especially after the devastation of Bal. Now, Flesh Terrors are probably the most famous. These guys are probably my most favorite, the Lamenters. Um, so they... They screwed up. They they, they chose the side of uh, a heretic during the uh, the Badab War. So they sided with um, the Astral Claws. And to avoid getting completely destroyed, they agreed to go on a massive penitent crusade. Um, so for their entire history, pretty much since then, they've been fighting in battles where they lose pretty much everyone. And it's all just a forlorn hope. Super depressing. Um, but excellent. Like my first short story that I ever read from GW was the fall of fall of Malvoyan. Um, it was just a, it was on the GW website back then. And it was a little blurb about the Tyranids eating some Mordian guardsmen and the Lamenters came to save them and they all died horribly. The, the first assault went really well. Like one guy died, guy nuked a Carnifex by blowing its head up with melt gun, but then they all died and then everyone else died and the Tyranids won. But yeah, that that pretty much summed up the Lamenters in their, even their name. <laughs> they lament being alive. So this is what I was saying earlier. Um, the Insignium Sanguis. So it basically shows their battlefield role. Red is for your battle line. Yellow is for your close support, like your assault and stuff like that. Fire support is in blue. And then veteran and commander in gold. I can't tell. I'm kind of colorblind, guys. But that might be a different color of gold for veterans. Vice command might be bronze and gold. Let me know in the comments. I'm actually curious. I'm not super up on the Blood Angels lore. Um, but I, I know a bit after reading this. Um, and they're pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I can see why a lot of you guys play them. Play them, Fighting some Tyranids here. Fighting some clowns. Mephiston with his vampire pose. More your typical catalog of toys, right? Basically, this is what your minis, our minis look like. Buy them and play them like this. Um... Just your company designations. They use blood drops. Pretty badass. Uh, fighting some Eldar. And then we got the Flesh Terrors fighting some Orcs. You know that is an epic fight. <laughs> uh, those Orcs are having the time of their lives. They're probably all dying to a man but or to a fungus. But they're having the time of their lives because they're just getting deep into melee with <laughs> crazy vampire marines. Uh, Sanguinary Guard probably the most angelic looking models like i feel like these heavily influenced um the age of sigmar stormcasts just they have their death masks and they're they're all gold and stuff they look really cool the wings even um death company so you can actually take in death company intercessors now um but the assault variant they get a librarian dreadnought which is really cool we'll touch on that extra special dreadnought the furioso gets a frag cannon before the death watch had it they were fragging stuff before it was cool hipster Blood Angels. Um, fighting some more Nids. This is obviously from the Devastation of Bal, where they were almost completely overrun by High Fleet Leviathan, but then teamed up with the Necrons, because that's not heresy. Um, here they are fighting some more Bugs, uh, showcasing the new Speeder, stuff like that. Um, all the cool units. You got Blade Guard right out the front with Mephiston, Sanguinary Guard, ready to go hack up some Xenos. And now we're into the meat and potatoes of it. So, let's start with the rules. All right, so the rules. Uh, this basically will just take you over what you need to do to play Blood Angels or any of their successors, right? It works, again, in conjunction with the Marine book. So we have, just quickly, our match play rules, Battleforged rules, Army rules, uh, Crusade rules for the narrative guys out there, or gals, uh, data sheets, war gear, points, rules reference. So uh, let's crack on. Nice aggressor there. Uh, so quickly it goes through successor chapters and explains how they work. 
Now, I know in the old book, uh, a lot of the successor chapters weren't allowed to take any of the fancy uh, relics and stuff like that because they were not actual blood angels. But in this one, they've kind of amended it, whereas flesh terrors can. Uh, just quickly here on uh, chapter relics, blood angels successor chapters have access to special issue war gear relics. Okay, that's your adamantine mantle and stuff like that. We'll get into it. Um... Relics of the Angels cannot be given to a character model from a successor chapter other than the Flesh Terrors. So the Flesh Terrors can still take the uh, the other stuff um, unless you've used the Honored by the Arcs Angelicum Stratagem. So there is a stratagem that lets your Lamenters or your Atlanteans or Crew Roar Blades, <laughs> sorry for anyone who collects them and how I probably butchered it, but allows these guys to actually take some of the juicier relics as well. Uh, Combat Patrol, so this is the new box that GW is their new Get Started sets they're coming out with. It basically gives you a 50 power level army um, that you can, and it gives you some, the Blood Angels one actually gives you some pretty good options. Um, so you got your Librarian, you got your five of your Infiltrators or Incursors, you have your Aggressors, some uh, Intercessors, that's what they're called. Why do you make me review Space Marines? I play Orcs. Um, and <laughs> We have a uh, Impulsor? Impulsor, yeah. So it's got a little bit of everything. It's got your elite stuff. It's got your um, other stuff, your infiltrating stuff, your battle line. It's got a Psyker. Um, so yeah, that's your combat patrol. Chapter approved rules. So this is like your, you're looking at your uh, secondary objectives that are specific to them. Now, Purge the Enemy, that's a pretty cool one. Um Blade of Sanguinius, uh, basically, at the start of your first command phase, you issue a challenge. So you take one of your characters and you issue a challenge to the enemy, and they have to accept with one of their characters. And if neither of you have any characters, then it must be your warlord. So basically, you score five victory points at the end of the battle for each of the following conditions that have been satisfied. So they kind of stack. Um, basically, you get five points if he dies. The challenger or the challengee was destroyed. You get an additional five points if the challengee was destroyed in melee. And then you get an additional five points, the full 15, the big bonanza, if the challengee was destroyed in melee by an attack that made by the model that issued the challenge. So you make some... I know the, the old OG Smash Captain, he's kind of gone by the wayside, but you can still make a, a pretty decent one, I guess. Um, have him jump in, kill the other character, and boom, you have 15 victory points at the end of the battle. Pretty good stuff. Um, this one's kind of tricky. You pretty much have to spam Death Company. <laughs> Um, but you score three victory points at the end of your turn if uh, one or more enemy units have been destroyed by a death company unit from your army. So if you're bringing a lot of death company and you have no other option for the no mercy, no respite category, bring Fury of the Lost. Give give those raving lunatics something to actually die for. Um, detachment abilities. So basically, if you have a Blood Angel detachment, all Blood Angels, it gets these abilities. Savage Echoes. So while this doctrine is active, so this is their their super doctrine. Uh, each time a unit fights, uh, if it made a charge move, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention, then until the fight is resolved, add one to the attacks. <laughs> Characteristic. So you get plus one attack in assault doctrine with an assault oriented army. You're just piling on attacks. Um, <laughs> savage echoes are it's pretty savage. Um, now, the Lost. Now, before you could make... Uh, you had a Warlord trait, I think, that made uh, a character Death Company. I'm not too sure. I know people did it. Um, but now it's basically the same for, like, the Masters of the Chapter kind of stuff you saw in the Marine book. You actually have to pay power and or points um, for it. So... Um, but there are some benefits to this. So, basically, you have your Captain. You give him pay either plus one power or plus 20 points. You can only do this to one Captain per detachment or one two up to two Lieutenants per detachment. But you make them Death Company, and then that removes them from the order of battle, as it were, and you can actually bring additional captains and lieutenants in that detachment. So it's like you can actually, you can bring two captains in a detachment, just you have to make one of them Death Company, because he's so eager to die, he's actually not even there. He's on the bridge of the Vengeful Spirit, he doesn't know where he's at, so he's he doesn't have, he's part, he's out of the chain of command. So you actually have a real captain who's actually in charge of everything to, to kind of do it. So yeah, you can... You can kind of make your death company smash captain and throw him away kind of thing. Maybe maybe use it to both get Fury of the Lost and Blade of Sanguinius. It's something to think about. I, I don't know. Um, but basically, these rules apply. 
So a model is inducted into the death company gains the black rage and death visions abilities. A model introduced inducted into the death company cannot be your warlord and cannot be given any other chapter command upgrades. So you can't have death company chapter master or something like that. Uh, a captain model inducted into the death company has his rights of battle ability replaced with following ability rights of rage aura. So basically it takes his rights of battle, which is his reroll one's aura from applying to all core units, and it only affects Death Company. So he's not rerolling ones for your intercessors or your aggressors or anything like that. He only gives that buff to actual other Death Company, so they kind of just go around together and kill things. Uh, Lieutenant, same thing. So he replaces Tactical Precision with Tactical Aggression. It only affects Death Company core units. And then Death Company character units are excluded from the Chapter Command rule, so that's what I was touching on. Um... For example, a death company or attachment can include, include both one death company captain and one other captain unit. And then there's a little blurb at the bottom saying, in a crusade force, a model cannot be upgraded in this manner. That's because there's an actual mechanic in the crusade rules for Blood Angels where all of your units can succumb to the Black Rage slowly throughout your campaign. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, you can't buy it out of the gate. It's something that your units actually have to fall to, and you can choose to try to fight it or, or go with it, right? Really cool, like, role-playing narrative aspect to that. Big shout-out to G-Dubs for it. And now we're taking a look at the stratagems. So, there's a couple that are flesh terror specific and then there are... The rest are specific to all Blood Angels and their successors. So, uh, Descent of Angels. This is one that a lot of... It's it's pretty good. Um, your your core units come in from Deep Strike. Um, yeah, it's set up at, during the reinforcement step of this phase. Until the end of the turn, uh, you can ignore any or all modifiers to your charge rolls. So if they have the repulsor field or something crazy like that, you're like, no, I don't care. I'm going in anyways. Um, and it's any or all. So that means you can, the way it's worded, you can stack buffs and ignore debuffs. So it's like if you find a buff somewhere where it's like, oh, plus two to charge. And they're like, oh, no, it's minus two to charge. Like, no, it's not. I ignore that one, but not this one. Really cool. Uh, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, add one to the attack set roll. So so not only if you make your charge to your blood angels, you're getting a plus one to wound. Now you get plus one to, plus one to hit, and you're ignoring any negative modifiers, basically, to your charge. For one command point. Pretty good if you're if you're running deep strike heavy um, units, right? Or a deep strike heavy army. Or even if you're not, you have that one unit that you just want to make it in because you know they're going to make a difference, like Death Company or Sanguinary Guard or maybe that Smash Captain we were talking about. It's all there. Um, and then we'll uh, refuse to die. So this is the Death Company ex extra shrug. Um, cause death company, they innately feel things for it's their, it's the black rage rule. We'll touch on that later, but black rage basically gives them a six up shrug, uh, refusal to die. You pay one or two command points, depending on the size of the unit. And then if it's five or fewer, it's one, if it's more, it's two, but basically that gives them a five up shrug instead. So it just gives them that much extra bit of survivability cause they're so insane, but they just want to get in and rip and tear things. And then we have... Aggressive Onslaught. So this is uh, one of the Flesh Terror specific ones I touched on. This one. <laughs> um, I'm going to read the blur the lore blurb for you too, because it, even, it, it sounds excellent. Flesh Terror is constantly pushed towards new foes, moving one step closer to engaging the enemy and sating their lust to kill. <sighs> Use this stratagem in the fight phase. Select one Flesh Terror's infantry unit. Infantry unit can be a character um, from your army. Until the end of that phase... Each time a model in that unit makes a pile in our consolidation move, it can move an additional three inches. So, you have characters, or like Gabriel Seth, or you have Death Company that belong to the Flesh Terrors. You have just Flesh Terrors in general because they're, they're savage boys. Um, any, any extra movement is really good, especially when it comes in the fight phase. It, it allows you to get that board control uh, if you've wiped a unit. Um, maybe if you've completely, cause you have that many attacks that you can actually butcher like the first, like five, six ranks of gaunts or mobbed up boys squads or whatever it is. And then they'll be like, haha, I killed out of engagement range. No, you didn't. Here I am six inches in your face again. So you're, <laughs> they aren't getting away from you. Um, 
we're going to talk when we go to Gabriel Seth's data sheet, we're going to touch on this stratagem again because there's a really useful way to use this in conjunction with him, especially when it's only one command point, guys. It's excellent, 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 excellent stuff. Angel Sacrifice. So this is another one I really like. Uh, Epic Deed. One command point. Use the stratagem in the fight phase. Select one Blood Angel's character unit, excluding vehicles. So you're not going to be using this on like a Libby Dread or something. Uh, from your army. Until the end of that phase, each time an enemy unit is selected to fight, if a model in that unit is within engagement range of that character unit, when your opponent is selecting targets for its attacks, those attacks can only target that character unit. I know it's a mouthful. Their, their, their wording has gotten like this to avoid the rules as written, vice rules as intended argument you see a lot at uh, tournaments and stuff. But I'll break it out for you guys. Um, basically, you pop this stratagem and your, your opponent, if your character is involved with, say, a mob of orc boys, and you also have Death Company involved with those orc boys, you pop this stratagem, your character can now be the only one be able to be targeted by the, your opponent's attacks until he dies, obviously, I would imagine. Um, I might We might need to see an FAQ on that, but I'm pretty sure it's until he dies. But basically, that saves your death company or whatever other unit from being completely swamped by boys' attacks, and they have to dump all of their attacks into that character who can maybe shrug it, or they just they take it and they die. I'm... But it saves a much more valuable unit, potentially, especially if you're fighting over an objective or something like that. Uh, so it's a lot, it's really narrative. It's a lot like uh, Sanguinius, how he actually, he saved the Emperor from Horus on the uh, Vengeful Spirit. So your character is invoking the Angel's Sacrifice. Um, really cool narrative stratagem, really good stratagem. Awesome. Um, Visions of Sanguinius, one command point. It's another epic deed. Uh, it's for Death Company characters. Basically, you can double down on Death Visions. We'll touch on Death Visions um, later on, but this is also incredibly useful because Death Visions are <laughs> Death Visions are fantastic. Um, Angel Exemplar, your extra warlord kind of thing. Um, Lucifer Pattern Engines. So it basically gives you uh, your overcharge that or your your flat out movement that you could see with like bikes and stuff, but you can use it on uh, blood angels vehicles that can't fly. So you take your predator or something and you flat out six inches. Uh, now each time that model advances, you do not make an advance roll in until the end of that phase, add six inches to the move characteristic. Um, it, you don't make an advance roll, but it still says when that model advances, so don't really expect to be firing heavy weapons in conjunction with this, but uh, still, if you need to get somewhere, it's nice to have in your back pocket. Honored by the Arx Angelicum. So that's your relic stratagem that you can use for your successor chapters, or it allows you to take, yeah, it lets your lamenters take a Blood Angel's relic. Um, Red Rampage. So this is the the army-wide buff, for, and it's only one command point, guys. Use this stratagem in your command phase if the Assault Doctrine is active for your army. Until the, your next command phase, each time a Blood Angel's model from your army makes an attack with a pistol or melee weapon, on an unmodified wound roll of 6, the armor pen is increased by 1. This bonus is cumulat or cu cumulative with the Combat Doctrine's ability. So, <laughs> you have AP3 Chainswords? <laughs> <laughs> on sixes in the assault doctrine <laughs> this is excellent this year because there's so much ignore neg one out there and there's or ignore neg one modifiers um out there for like units and stuff like that but there's also a lot of ignore neg one and two i know tyranids have it with their war or it's a, a adaptive biology i think and sisters they can really stack on those buffs in a pretty big aura for ignoring neg one and two to get through that power armor, but now you're pumping coming in and neg three on those sixes to wound, and you're pumping out a bunch of attacks. So it's you're cleaving through things. It's uh, that's an excellent strategy. Uh, Forlorn Fury. So this is your Death Company one. You basically blitz them up the table before the game begins. So it's at the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn begins. So you you already know if you're going first or not. Um, one or two command points, depending on the size of the unit. Again, if it's five or less, it's one. If it's six or more, it's two. Um, 
you get to make a normal move of up to 12 inches. So that doesn't mean you can move your foot death company or your death company dreadnoughts 12 inches. It means you can move up to. So you can use your jump packs if you have them to get further up the field, right? Um, if both players have units... and Oh, and you can't be within 9 inches of an enemy model uh, by the end of that move. Uh, so you, it doesn't have the um, deployment zone restriction. You just can't be near an enemy model. Uh... If both players have it, then you alternate, um, starting with the player who has the first turn. And then, uh, oh, and then if it's a Dreadnought, it's also two command points. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Uh, upon Wings of Fire. So this isn't as good as it was. Uh, I know there was a little bit of grief about this, but I feel like it's better. There's no broken combos really anymore. It's more just, it's all about bringing balancing, guys. But you still have a Palm Wings of Fire. So for a command point, you can take your Blood Angel's core jump pack unit and remove it from the battlefield. It doesn't immediately come back in like it used to. You have to wait a turn. So it comes in as reinforcements next time. Or next round. So you got to think ahead. It's all about planning ahead. We all know the good players plan ahead anyways. So a Palm Wings of Fire could be really useful. Save a unit, bring it down where you need to bring it down, right? And uh, <laughs> these two. So... This one's okay. I mean, it, it plays with uh, combat attrition a bit. I'm I'm not too sure on how it would actually pan out. I'd have to play multiple games with it, but I don't play Blood Angels, so here we are. Uh, use the stratagem in the morale phase when a morale test is failed for an enemy unit that is within engagement range of any flesh terrors unit from your army. Until the end of the turn, subtract one from combat attrition until uh, for that enemy unit. So... That's, that's actually pretty good for one command point, because it's army-wide, actually. Any enemy unit within range of any, oh, engagement range of any flesh terrors unit. So it's like you hit your battle lines, you you can you can screw them up a bit. And then lastly, we got the chalice overflowing. So sanguinary priests are great. Um, you're gonna see them in a lot of lists. This lets you use their uh, blood chalice ability an additional time in that phase. So that's you double up on it for a command point. Good stuff. Uh, so we got warlord traits here. Um, just go, well, I'll go over two. I'll pick one from each. Uh, so we have Gift of Foresight. Um, each turn, you can reroll one hit, wound, or saving throw, and one saving throw made for this Warlord. So save a command point, guys. Um, it's good. It's all right. <laughs> uh, Cretation Born. Flush Terrors only, right? But uh, each time this Warlord declares a charge, enemy units that were targeted by that charge cannot fire Overwatch. So those of you who are missing the Angel's Wing and stuff like that, um, you can't fire Overwatch against this. Or set to defend, so they can't even get better like hitting prowess against you. And then you can re-roll charge rolls made for that Warlord. So, <laughs> boom. And then we got uh, just a list of the what Warlord trait, what each of the characters have. So, um, the Sanguinary Discipline, their Psychic Powers... Uh, they have three really good ones, and they've always been the really good ones, so it's like the quickening. Um, Unleash Rage and Wings. <laughs> it basically turns your uh, your Psyker into a monster, or uh, well, not a monster keyword, but like a monster in melee. And Unleash Rage um, buffs a... Um, gives them extra hits, so each time that you make an unmodified hit roll of six, you get an additional hit, so exploding attacks, right? Nice stuff. Uh, relics. So we'll get into this. Not as many as we saw in the Death Watch, obviously, um, but some of them are pretty good. So we have the Icon of the Angel. So the bearer gains the following ability, Icon of the Angel Aura. Well, friendly Blood Angels unit is within six inches of this model. You can re-roll charge rolls made for that unit. It's not like a... It's not a standard or anything either. You can give this to any character. So, like, he's chilling with his retinue and stuff like that, and they get reroll charges. Excellent stuff. Um, Visage of Death. So, this is like a special death mask, I get, I guess. Each time a melee attack is made against this unit, subtract one from the hit roll, or the attack's hit roll. Pretty cool. He's too scary. Don't look at him. Don't look at me. Um, the bear gains the follow ability, Visage of Death Aura. So when an enemy is within three inches of this model, it loses objective secured and any similar abilities that allow it to control an objective regardless of the number of enemy models. So it's, <laughs> he's, 
he scares the crap out of people and they can't hold an objective. They forget why they're there. They're so scared of him and they can't really hit him back either. It's, it's excellent. Again, roll your warlord up with a retinue. That objective is mine now, worm. <laughs> Good stuff. Hammer of ball. Um, same as before, really. Um, I know other thunder hammers got nerfed with their AP value, um, but this one didn't. It's still AP three. Uh, it's still times two strength. It's still flat damage three and it still doesn't have the to hit penalty. Um, we'll notice the loss of the Angel's Wing. They pulled that out of the the match play relics. It's now a Crusade relic, um, so if you're playing some fluffy Crusade, you can still bring the Angel's Wing. And then Severer. Um, it's Flushed Terrors only again, but it replaces an Astartes Chainsword. And it basically, it's kind of like the Teeth of Terra. So it's plus two strength, minus two, flat two damage. Each time an attack is made with this weapon... On an unmodified wound roll of 5+, plus, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. So it's like it's it's less like Teeth of Terror, actually. It's more like the, the Black Legion Relic. Garavex's Teeth, or whatever it's called. Nice on a, a Smash Captain, goes in blend stuff, right? Maybe a different, a much cheaper alternative to the Hammer of Ball. Uh, and then you have your Special Issue War Gear. So you have your standard ones. Then you have your Angel Shard. Um, it's... A better power sword that does extra against mon- or chaos and chaos monsters. It goes to flat damage four against a chaos monster unit. So if you're playing a lot of demons in your meta, bring that. Start blending them. Flush render grenades are your better uh, grenades. And the gleaming pinions. So this is a jump pack. It's not the angel's wing, but it's angel's wing adjacent, I guess. The bear um, is eligible to charge in the turn in which it fell back. So you can fall back charge. And then you can also reroll charge rolls. So it's all about getting into melee, getting that charge bonus. You, you jump in, you hit, you fall back, you charge again, you get that bonus. It's a lot of good stuff with that. Uh, crusade rules. I won't go through this um, in too much depth, but basically you got your normal crusade rules that you'll find in any other codex, but you also have the flaw. And that's basically the bit that... Uh, does your black rage tests at the end of any uh, at the end of battles fallen heroes stuff like that really cool stuff blood cleansing i think actually you can beat the black rage with that yeah you lose one flaw point um for two requisition points though so nifty stuff in crusade always keeping it fluffy and there's the angel's wing <laughs> bok bok <laughs> um honorifics so you get your special chapter or company master buffs for Crusade. Name generator. Name your character something cool. Cesare. It's a badass name. <laughs> Cesare. Uh, data sheet. We'll get into the data sheets. So, right away, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of these guys. Um, there is nine pages worth of HQ data sheets in this. They they have all the characters stretching back for like the past 20 years. It's... Blood Angel's got a lot of fluff in their characters. It's, it's it's nice to see, actually. I just wish some of them would get new sculpts, but we're not the powers that be. Uh, Commander Dante, so he's your he's your typical chapter master. Um, he, so he actually has another cool buff. Uh, he's the Lord Regent of the Imperium Nihilus. So if your army's battleforged, you get an additional command point if he's your warlord. Really cool. He has a death mask. So you subtract one from the hits roll that's to when attacks are made against him. Um, you'll see that with a lot of the Sanguinary Guard as well. People are too scared to look at them. Uh, rights of Battle, it's his aura. Uh, chapter Master, he chooses one core. Character unit can be himself. Um, and then Epic Hero of the Imperium. So once per battle, if this model is selected to use an Epic Deed stratagem, the stratagem costs zero command points. So he can use Angel Sacrifice. That's actually the only Epic Deed he qualifies for, but he can use it for free every game. So... <laughs> If you don't mind throwing Dante in the way of a, a bunch of choppas to save your obsec units, he, he uses it for free. Um, really cool. Really narrative. Oldest space marine in the Imperium. No Adam, it's not Bjorn. Um, Gabriel Seth. So, he's a bad, 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 bad man. Um, Whirlwind of Gore. Again, he's a chapter master. Same buffs, all that stuff. Uh, at the end of e- at the end of the fight phase, if this model is within engagement range of any enemy units, it can fight again. It can fight again. So remember that one command point stratagem that was uh, flushed hairs only that allows him to consolidate or pile in an additional six inches. So Gabriel Seth fights, 
He kills a bunch of orcs because he's a blender. And then they think that they've killed you out of engagement range. He's like, oh, no, I'm going to pile in six inches. Oh, wait, I'm in engagement range. I'm going to fight again. <laughs> it's, it never ends. Stop, stop. He's already dead. <laughs> it's, uh, Lord of Slaughter. It's an aura ability for him. So when a friendly flesh terror's core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, on an unmodified wound roll of six, the damage is increased by one. Damage two chain swords at minus three. In the Assault Doctrine. <laughs> Excellent. Love it. He also hits with a Thunder Hammer that doesn't have a minus, so it's it's great. Um, Sanguinor, really fluffy character. Not too sold on him, maybe, in all competitive bits, but uh, he basically, he can deep strike... Uh, Angelic Visage, again, he's too pretty to look at, I guess, so they subtract one from the attacks to hit roll. Uh, two really cool rules. Or actually, three. Um, I'll go through all of them here quickly. While, the, uh, while a friendly Blood Angel's core Blood Angel's character unit is within six inches of this model... Each time that unit fights until the fight is resolved, add one to the attack's characteristic of models in that unit. It's not cumulative with additional attack granted by Shock Assault. So basically, any prolonged combats, he lets you keep your extra attacks. Because he's like a savior, right? He comes in when the battle seems lost, and then you get renewed with fervor. Uh, miraculous Savior, at the end of uh, the heroic intervention step of your opponent's charge phase, if this model has not yet been set up on the battlefield, and if any enemy models... Or units finish to charge, move within engagement range of any flood friendly Brawl Angels units. This phase, you can set up this model within engagement range of one of those enemy units. This model has, has having performed a heroic intervention. So basically, you keep them out of the battle. They can heroically intervene into you. And then, oh, boop, here comes Sanguinor. He's in combat with you now. He's saving us. Awesome. Uh, and then you have Avenging Angel. So this model is eligible to declare a charge even if it fell back this turn. This model is eligible to perform a heroic event intervention if it was within six inches horizontally and five inches vertically of any enemy unit instead of three horizontally and five vertically. Each time this model makes a heroic intervention move, it can move up to six inches instead of three inches. All other rules for heroic interventions apply. So the, the Sanguinor, he's in the fluff, he's the savior. He shows up when the battle seems lost. Uh, and his rules really reflect that. Um, now, I mean, he does have five attacks at strength six minus four damage two uh, that do mortal wounds in addition. Um, it's just there's a lot of characters in the Blood Angels, so it's like you kind of pick and choose. And <laughs> I just forgot. We skipped over <laughs> the Death Visions. So it goes through the Black Rage abilities. Um, Black Rage... Uh, in your mo any this is for your death company and stuff like that. In your movement phase, each time this model is selected to move, it cannot fall back because they're so into it, they're so ready to rip and tear, they can't fall back. So it's actually, if you have a canny opponent, he can kind of use this to his advantage. Uh, each time this unit fights, if it made a charge move, performed a heroic intervention this turn, and until that fight is resolved, add one of the attacks <laughs> characters of models in this unit. So, Savage Echoes, in the Assault Doctrine, you had one to your attacks. Shock Assault, you had one to your attacks. <laughs> Black Rage, you had one to your attacks. <laughs> you, you, you have models with like six, seven attacks on the charge. <laughs> it's, it's ruthless. Uh, each time a model in this unit loses a wound, roll a d6 on a six, it's lost. So it's like a shrug. This unit can also not perform any actions. Again, they don't care about the wider scheme of the battle. They're not participating in that battle. They think they're on board the Vengeful Spirit. So, obviously, they can't do actions. And then you have the Death Visions. So, once per battle... Once per battle? Once per battle, when this model is selected to fight, it can use one of the Death Visions listed below. The same Death Vision cannot be used more than once per battle. So, only one unit can use... One unit can only use one. And if you have multiple units, you can't choose the same one. Is what that basically means. So on the Bridge of the Vengeful Spirit, uh, all of these are really cool. It's like, they're not, again, they completely lose sight. They black out and they actually think they're Sanguineous on the Bridge of the Vengeful Spirit. So it's like, this is all what happened when Horus struck him down. 
So basically on the bridge, a model can use only use this death vision if an enemy infantry character or monster character models are visible to it. If a model uses this death vision, then until the fight is resolved, add one to that model's attack characteristic for every five models within six inches of it. So a big swarm of griblies. Well, now you got a bunch of extra attacks and there's no cap on this one. Each time that model makes an attack, you re-roll the hit roll. Rerolling hits. You don't see that very often anymore outside of like that one unit chapter master can give it to. Now it's like, okay, now I just give it to another one. Excellent stuff. Um, the Grace of the Angel. A model can only use this death vision if an infantry, uh, enemy infantry character or monster character models are within engagement range. If a model uses this death vision, then until the end of this turn, it has a three up and vulnerable save. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> to slay the war master, a model can only use this death vision if enemy infantry character or monster character models are within engagement range of it. If a model uses this death vision, then instead of making any attacks for that fight, both players roll off. If you win, select one of those enemy models. It suffers D3 plus 3 mortal wounds. So it's like, that's the coup de gras. It's like if they have a character that's wounded, he's a high invuln save, and you just want him gone. Maybe he's the one you challenged. It's like, oh, yeah, and now he's dead. <laughs> excellent thing. Excellent, excellent, excellent stuff. It's also a guaranteed way to take out Gazkal if he's on his final four wounds in the fight phase. Don't know how I feel about that as an orc player, but there we go. <laughs> um, and then back to the characters. Brother Corbulo, he's a buffed up uh, Sanguinary Priest. Basically, his red grail is an aura, uh, or his crimson blood grail is an aura, so it's a special one. It affects all units within instead of choosing a unit. And we'll touch on that when we get to the actual um, Sanguinary Priest, who's right here. So, the Blood Chalice. In your command phase, select one friendly Blood Angel's core or Blood Angel's character unit, excluding vehicles within six inches of this model. Until the start of your next command phase, if the tactical or devastator doctrine is active, then each time a model in that unit makes an attack, the assault doctrine is considered to be active. Pick a unit, give it assault doctrine. <sighs> extra attacks, extra AP, all the goodies that there and it goes. And this is in on top of that, he's a an apothecary, and you can give him a jump pack so he can keep up with your stuff. So he can get stuck in turn one and two and three. And you can keep other stuff in Devastator and Tactical Doctrine and still stab things. It's excellent. Chief Librarian Mephiston, the big man himself, crossing the Rubicon Primaris. I mean, if the Black Rage couldn't take him, then a uh, simple surgery definitely couldn't. Um, he's still the beat stick he always was. I don't know if he's a good support librarian. But then again, the Blood Angels don't have a lot of good support powers. Um, their, li their powers, are, their librarians seem to just be beat sticks that go in and mess things up. Again, we got the Librarian Dreadnought, who <laughs> further enforces that. Um... <laughs> He punches things with his giant fist and slaps things with his giant spear. Um, I, again, I mean, it's a librarian and a dreadnought. Really cool stuff. Only Blood Angels can do it. Astarath and Lamartes, we touched on those guys earlier. They're basically the characters that keep the Death Company in check. So, he has a special litany for... Um, uh, ba that's his little thing. He has a, his special litany. And he has the Redeemer of the Lost. So he basically the auto pass morale uh, for Death Company that are near him. And then Lamartes is more of a buff for them. So it's like Fury Unbound. Uh, you can reroll charge rolls for Death Company that are near him. Uh, yeah, it's. They're, they're good. I mean, if you're bringing Death Company and you're playing the actual Blood Angels chapter, then you're going to be bringing one of these two guys. Maybe both if you have the points. Captain Tycho and Tycho the Lost. So he has a hate on for orcs, a poor the beast. Add one of the strength and da damage characteristics of attacks that this model makes against an orc unit. Um, and then this is him with the Black Rage. It's, it's the way it is. Uh, Sanguinary Guard. You can't give these guys the feel no pain that you could before, the shrug, I guess, that you could before. Um, so they're not as durable, but they're still really good. They still hit like a train. Um, they have the minus one to hit in combat, which does help them. And they get the plus one to hit if they're near your warlord. So you definitely want them moving around as a cohesive unit. Um, slew of options. They can you can customize them to your heart's content. Lovely unit. Sanguinary Ancient. He's very expensive, <laughs> but he's all his banner is great. Um, basically, you add one to the roll 
in an aura around him. So it's like, he's... I don't know if he's exactly worth his points, but he is really good. Uh, your Death Company Dreadnought. So this is Dreadnought with the Death Company keyword. So he has his shrug and all that. The Magda Grapple is pretty cool now. Um, each time an enemy unit, except aircraft, is selected to fall back uh, and is within engagement range of the bearer, you can engage its Magna Grapple. If you do, roll 2d6. If it's less than the strength, the unit can fall back. Um, otherwise, it cannot fall back this phase and remain stationary instead. So you keep things near you. They can't get away. You keep pounding on them. Good stuff. Death Company Marines and Death Company Intercessors. Now, these are a tough sell, Death Company Intercessors. They don't have the extra wound anymore, and they're still more expensive, and they're more shooty, unless you bring them... I mean, I guess you can make the Assault Intercessors, but these guys are cheaper, and they are a throwaway unit, guys. Their, their whole job is to go and die. Um, so you're hard-pressed, I think, to run, actually, Death Company Intercessors over the regular Marines. They have more options. They can take the jump packs. They can take the drop pods. The delivery options are so much better for these. Um, and they still hit like a freight train. You can't take 15 anymore. You can only take them in groups of 10, but so be it. Um, then we got the Furiosa Dreadnought. It's the other special Dreadnought. Unlike other ones, um, this one, the Librarian one, and the Death Company one, they don't have the core keyword because they're specific to the Blood Angels, guys. Um, but other than that, it's a Dreadnought that can double fist things. Um, still has the Magna Grapple rule. It can take the Frag Cannon, which is 2d3, strength 7 minus 1, 2 damage blast. Eh. And lastly, we have the Battle Predator. Now, this guy, I feel like he's only in the book because they have a model. Um, uh, he's a Predator. Uh, he's he's a Predator, guys. Uh, he has some extra, like, some cool, unique weapons. He's faster, but they aren't assault, so it doesn't really help. Um, that's my thoughts on it, I guess. <laughs> And after that, guys, we have the weapons profiles and the points values. Love the way the points are laid out. I've said that before. I'll keep saying it. It's really well done. It even shows you what it costs for your death company upgrades. It makes it really easy if you don't have access to a uh, media device that lets you do that. So that's the uh, Blood Angels Codex. I like it. They're in a good place right now, I think. I like it a lot. Um, Why... Well, why can't orcs have death company? <laughs> oh, um, that being said, though, I actually I don't think there's a reason to run a lot of Primaris and Blood Angels army, and I, I mean I'm sure some of the other guys will agree with me for their uh, other special chapters like Space Wolves and Dark Angels, but it's really the, it's the unique units within this book and the unique rules that can benefit them specifically that actually make the 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 supplement itself shine. Um, sure, you can have your Primaris battle line, you can sub in a few units here and there, but I don't think you're actually unlocking this book if you take an all Primaris force, you know what I mean? So, a lot of their OG units are still really good, it keeps the flavor. Love it, love it. Alright, thanks guys. Sponsored by... <laughs> Huge thank you to our subscribers, guys. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe down below for more Anvil of War. Do you have the Black Rage? I like to picture my proper big angel wing when you see the vocals for Leopard Skinner. <laughs> yeah. Wearing, no. wearing a tuxedo t-shirt that says, I like to party, but I also like to dress formal. Leave, leave.